All right, guys, so the first uh, installment in the audio lecture series for cardiology. So CDC uh, estimates, well, the WHO estimates that 17.7 .7 million people had a cardiovascular related death in 2015, which was 31% of all global deaths. So cardiac related problems are, are huge and they're going to be a big problem in the future. Sometimes it's social habits and sometimes we live it a little longer than our ticker can uh, compensate for, we'll say that. So uh, around 60 million Americans will have some form of cardiovascular disease and it is the largest killer. So every time you study the epidemiology of anything, it's always the number one in some respect. But this one is not the number one killer of Americans in this category or that category. It is just the single largest killer of Americans, period, cardiovascular disease. So it's not some runner up or triple A or minor league problem. It's the big leagues. Uh, a lot of the deaths from cardiac disease are preventable. It is partly the responsibility of the patient, of any patient, to seek care for cardiovascular diseases, for hypertension, high blood pressure, for chest pain, etc. Okay, so let's talk about some factors that increase risk and some factors that we think increase risks. All right. So some of the factors that we know, right? So this is proven. We've got the, the reports back, the studies are done. Things that increase cardiovascular risk, smoking and cocaine use. Those are two big ones, all right? Uh, for obvious reasons. Living too long is another one, okay? Just getting old is proven to increase cardiovascular risk. Of course, you know, you've got your histories and things like that, family histories. Hypertension, particularly unmanaged hypertension or poorly managed hypertension is another one. High cholesterol or carbohydrate intolerance. And what is the other name for carbohydrate intolerance? You guessed it, diabetes. Type 1 and type 2 are particular risks for coronary artery disease, for all types of cardiovascular disease. And we manage that risk in order to mitigate it by measuring A1C. So if you want to do some extra reading, A1C is going to be your, your big one there. Uh, males have cardiovascular disease more often than females. Nobody's really proven why yet, but it is proven that we do. And then, of course, not exercising, right? Not using the cardiac muscle causes it to atrophy, so to speak. All right. So what are some factors that we think increases risks? And this is important for us to understand because sometimes what we think we pretend to know. So things that we think increase risk, but we don't have definitive things to prove it up are going to be diet and obesity, um, oral contraceptives such as birth control, type A personalities, that's a good one. So type A personalities, you can do some reading on that, actually have a pretty high correlation to cardiovascular disease. And then of course, psychosocial tensions or what is called stress. One of my favorite jokes in MASH was a, a guy started having chest pain and Hawkeye goes, well, I thought it was just pressure at the office. Um, we all know that stress can bring a heart attack on. It can induce a heart attack in someone who otherwise would not have had one. And it ties into all the body's mechanisms of you know high blood pressure and the, the cortico response to it and the whole nine. So we'll not dwell on that too much, all right? So how do we prevent cardiac death in the general population? Education is one. You see things on the sides of buses and on the sides of, of even moving vans and things that tell you about the symptoms of a heart attack, the symptoms of a stroke. Places like WebMD and uh, other, you know, the American Heart Association, they put out all these commercials that say recognize the symptoms of a heart attack, chest pain, jaw pain, you know, left arm pain, that kind of thing becomes important. All right. And the ultimate goal here is to try to get people to alter their lifestyle. So this has included some of the epidemiology of, of the cardiac patient. There is, of course, tons more. There are volumes and volumes written about this. This is just a basic and brief intro, and I'm going to try to keep these videos short and put them in a playlist because, you know, an hour-long lecture doesn't really help. An hour-long lecture, a lot of times in, in, you know, when you're listening to something in audio, you lose your place, you get interrupted or whatever, and you can't find where you were on the scroll bar. So I'm going to try to keep these five or ten minutes as we proceed through here. And this has been Five Minutes of Medicine. So we will begin next in the playlist with the cardiac anatomy and real physiology, how it actually works. All right, guys, thanks for listening.